as a priest, you get to meet all sorts of people and you get to meet all sorts of families. And as a missionary priest, uh, I get to meet, well, I, maybe before I was based here full time in Holy Family, uh, I got to meet even different families, different people in different countries. So you get to experience different cultures and how the church is in different places and uh, the pros and cons, the advantages and advantages, how things are going in different places. And it's, it's very interesting then you can kind of bring those experiences together. But I remember there was one particular family I visited in a country that shall remain nameless. Uh, but the, they were a lovely family, absolutely lovely family. But I noticed that the husband uh, didn't recognize what kind of a woman his wife was. She was absolutely, phenomenally incredible, right? The place, the house was absolutely spotless. Uh, the, you know, she'd clean up, she'd go out and shop, she'd have the meals prepared. And then they were a really, really picky family when it came to food. So the son wouldn't eat what the daughter was eating and the daughter wouldn't eat what the other brother was eating. So she'd have to cook like four dinners, you know, four kind of small plate sized portions of dinner. And, um, you know, and I, I, then me being Irish and me, well, partly being Irish and knowing nothing about food. And secondly, coming from a community where you simply ate whatever was served up, even if it was still kind of moving, you know, but, but if, if it came up on the plate, you ate it, right? Our Franciscan friend here knows what I'm talking about. Whatever served up, you eat or you go hungry, get used to it. Uh, so whenever she'd ask, you know, how was the food? I'd say fantastic. And it was again, maybe I, maybe I don't know much about food, but in my estimation, my humble and probably wrong estimation, uh, it was it was amazing. Like the pastas and gnocchi. Oops, I just gave away the country. <laughs> Whatever the food that was served up in my estimation was amazing, right? But then, uh, but then the husband would come back uh, for lunch or for dinner, and he'd say, eh, "Non sa cucina." She does. She doesn't know how to cook this one, and he'd say it to her while she was there. And, like, and she, after absolutely breaking her back to get ready, as I say, four dinners or four lunches, whatever it was, because everyone was so picky, right? And she's also an amazing woman of prayer. Uh, so like she'd, she had to actually kind of sneak away in the evenings or when the husband was off at you know, meetings or different things to go to prayer meetings because you know, he kind of wanted her home just in case anything needed to be done, <laughs> right? Uh, and I thought, like, Jeannie, she is abs- she's incredible. Like, she's such a holy, prayerful, serving wife. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know her. So even though like, he lives with her and spends the evenings with her, um, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know his own wife. Right? And it's, this, this happens, uh, and, and it, it, it's, it's very sad to see. Uh, but it reminded me of, of how it can be for us in the church, how we can actually... Father Terence, a Dominican priest who was here a couple of weeks ago, used this line more or less... Uh, which I, I quite liked, you know, that we can be so busy with the work of the Lord that we start to resent the Lord of the work. Not, you know, not just kind of forget the Lord of the work, but almost resent the Lord of the work. So you can actually be sacristan and just be kind of annoyed that you have to go to another mass. You can be, you know, part of the choir and say, Gene, you know, here, here, Easter is coming, all these complicated songs, for God's sake. You know what I mean? You can be, you can be, you know, you can write books on theology, on Our Lady, and resent the rosary. I mean, you, you know, just because things look good externally doesn't mean that internally the reality corresponds at all. You know, you might have, a, you might be married to a wonderful person that you don't appreciate at all. We might be Catholic and not know Jesus. We might be Catholic and have no relationship with the Eucharist whatsoever. Dare I say that's actually common today? For people to be Catholic and really not know anything about the Eucharist or not have any real devotion because the last time you heard or were formed in your, your knowledge of, of, of the Eucharist was at First Holy Communion when you were like, how old are they, 10, 8, 8 or 9, okay? But you never received an adult catechesis on the Eucharist. So it's all just, you know, about coming together and being nice and having a day out and the girls get to wear their baby wedding dresses and all this kind of thing. And that's what First Holy Communion is about. That's my knowledge of, of, uh, of communion, of, of the Eucharist. I don't, know, I don't know the Lord at all. don't know him. So we have this treasure that we just don't understand at all. So it's, this is like our gospel, right? Where Martha is busy. She's busy doing stuff for the Lord, but not spending time with the Lord. She's busy serving him, but maybe almost resenting him. Jesus, like, would you just tell her? Tell her to get up and help me, okay? I'm doing all of this myself. And why aren't you correcting her? 
you know? So she's actually kind of given out to Jesus as well as Mary, right? That lout there, right? That, that loafer, right? She'd do nothing. Tell her to get up and help me. So he's, she, she's given out to Jesus, and, and, and Jesus says, look, Martha, Martha. I could imagine now, I could imagine Jesus saying this in a slightly Donegal accent, just like, <laughs> like, 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 like our, our dear Liam here, right? just calming everyone down, just calming, Martha, Mar- Martha, Martha. Calm her down. <laughs> All right? You worry and fret about so many things, and yet so few are important. Indeed, only one. Only one thing is important. All right? And that is our love for the Lord. Everything else, pass, everything else will pass. Our love for the Lord, our love for God, this is what remains. This is like what's kind of weighed up at the end of our lives, if you will, the love with which we have lived. Not the, the amount of stuff we've done, the amount of tasks we have completed, but the love with which we've lived our lives. The love, that's what counts. It's the only thing that counts. You know, so it's how tragic it would be to be Catholic, to even be going to Mass, and not know the Lord. And as this is, I think this is actually quite common. Because you can go to Mass for all sorts of reasons. Now, obviously, we're just after entering... Yet another semi-lockdown kind of thing. So going to Mass uh, is, is a little more difficult. Um, it will come back, obviously. But in the meantime, even in, in our prayer time at home, we can be praying with a sense of duty. We can be praying to get it done and never actually meet the Lord in our prayer. We can be involved in the church now, I mean, up until relatively recently, sure there were all sorts of groups and committees uh, cleaning the churches after masses and things. And, and that can be turned actually again into like a, a duty and an annoyance and rather than I get to make it possible that people can come and receive Holy Communion. You know, I, in, through my service now, through, through this, you know, sterilizing, whatever I'm doing, I get to make it possible that people can receive Jesus. What a privilege. What an honor that in my, you know, by a couple of squirts and you know, rub of a rag, I get to actually make it possible that, that, that families can receive Jesus. You know, and to not, not forget what we're doing, why we're doing it, and who we're doing it for. That this is, this is all that matters, like, you know, our love for the Lord. To not be living with this treasure, or to live so close to a church, or to, to have the, the ability, the possibility of going to Mass on a regular basis. And just disregard it as, I suppose I have to. I'll feel bad if I don't. And not know the heart of the lover of our, of our soul. And so we ask the good Lord to renew our faith. Also in this time of lockdown, let's always use these um, difficulties or adversities to our advantage. Okay, so like things are going to be a little simpler now. We can't maybe travel as much as before. Okay, you have more time to pray. You probably have time now for three, three rosaries a day. So go for it. And in your prayer, get to know the Lord. Get to know the Lord who loves you. Get to know the sacred heart of Jesus. Pierce out of love for you. Get to know him. Lord, we ask that you will guide us through these difficult times and always. That we might always choose the better part listening and praying at your feet. Amen.